Hi, my name is Grant Bourne from ASD Asset Security Distribution and welcome to another tech tip video. This video will be on how to set up a uh, IP camera with a March Net Network 7532 DDR. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. The first thing we want to do is obviously open up the setup page for the DDR with a March Network 7532. What we do is we can access it through any browser, be it uh, Firefox, uh, Internet Explorer or Safari. We just put in the IP address setup and we'll be given a login. Um, so we log in with their username and password. And this will take us up into the setup page for that specific DVR. The first thing we want to do is to set up our network card. The March Network uh, 7532 comes with uh, two gigabit uh, NICs in it. One for connection to the customer's network and the other one obviously to connect through to the IP camera network to bring the IP cameras through. So we'll click on system, click on network interfaces and you'll see here we have uh, two connections we can choose from uh, which represent the two network connections on the actual DVR. So we're going to set up local area connection 2 as the network connection which all our IP cameras are going to connect to. Uh, now, normally for this type of thing, we won't want to use a DHCP IP address, but we want to use a static one. So we'll click on use the following address, and then here we'll type in an IP address that will be on the same range as all the IP cameras we are wanting to connect to. Um, Something like that. Alright, and click add. And then we'll also set up any of our gateways or any uh, DNS servers that we'll connect to as well. And then we'll click OK, and then it's most importantly, uh, whenever we change something, a little save button will come from the top right hand corner here uh, that we'll click on Save. Um, once we've configured our network interface, the next thing we want to do is obviously go and add our IP camera. So we'll click on Setup, and we'll click on Cameras. Now this will take us into our camera setup page um, for our March Networks DVR. Now on the left hand side here, you'll see 1 to 16 represent all the analog camera inputs and then any cameras uh, below that representing the IP cameras that we're currently adding to the system. The quickest way to add an IP camera is to click on uh, this little magnifying glass which will search for all compatible uh, IP cameras on the system and display them here. So I'll sure display all the March Network cameras uh, or any other cameras and so on. Now, as I've added most of our IP cameras on our network already to the system, it's only picking up uh, the DVRs and the edge encoder that's in there. Uh, if your camera did appear in here, all you'd have to do is select your camera and click OK. Make sure the details are correct, uh, and that would add your camera to the system. However, um, what we'll do is we'll do it through the manual way. So we'll cancel out of here, and we'll click on the plus sign to add in our IP camera. So first of all, we'll choose our brand. Um, so, as you can see, the uh, Silver 532 supports quite a few different brands from uh, Access uh, to Infonova, IQ and Vision Robotics, uh, Onco Compliant Cameras, Sony, and Samsung. So, we'll choose a March Network camera. We'll then choose the model. Again, all of the March Networks uh, cameras are supported, so we'll choose the uh, March Networks Megapix Microdome. We'll give the camera a fitting name. In this case, we'll do a training. Put in the IP address for it. So we've got. So we'll put in our IP address for the camera. And um, in this case, the IP address for that camera is 192.168.3.7. Uh, we'll give it a username and a password. As with all March Networks IP devices, the default username and password is admin without the password. So put admin and click OK. Uh, and then what you should see happen is uh, it will be, all the settings will be filled in here. Uh, we won't be able to see the camera yet. As explained before, after you adjusted any settings through the uh, setup, you should always click on the save button, which is this little um, picture of a disk at the top here. And after I click save, you should see uh, the camera pop up. Now you can see the camera pop up, and you can also see the camera date and time here. 
and also the codec it's running, the frame rate, and um, obviously how much bandwidth it's utilizing as well. So on the right hand side here we've got our brand model, the IP address, what port we're using, username and password. On specific other cameras you can actually choose the source camera, the codec and encoder. If you've got more than one stream running from your camera, this is where you can choose which stream and you can choose once you've chosen a specific stream, you can then choose if you want that stream to be uh, high, uh, medium quality or low quality. And this will come back to some other settings later on and how you want to record from that particular camera. So here, if your camera does have another stream in, you can add it in here and then choose if you want it to be a high, medium or, or low, depending on what you want the stream back to camera to do. Uh, if you have a March Networks uh, cloud account, then you can also register what encoder, if your camera's got more than one encoder, you want to use for your March Networks Cloud account. Now, March Networks, Networks Cloud is a way of um, basically viewing your IP cameras over the internet or from any uh, iPad or Android uh, pad or iPhone or Android phone um, live. And that will be covered off in a uh, further training session. Uh, training Transport protocol we don't need to worry about. Now the shadow sector, all the March Networks IP cameras uh, support what's called shadow archiving. This means if you put in an SD card in the IP camera, what will happen is if the camera for whatever reason uh, loses connection with uh, the server or the 7532 DVR, it will start recording the footage onto the SD card on the camera and then when the camera reconnects it will resync all the footage back into the DVR. So very handy if, uh, if you, as there's a bit of a redundant backup. Um, and all these settings have to do with how you want that sync to connect back up. And you can also do things as uh, such as vertical flip to vertically flip or horizontally flip the image, or you can even rotate the image around. If we click open setup, it will actually take us to the setup page on that particular camera. And then admin with our password. So once we've entered our username and password, that will take us into the setup page of the camera and we can adjust the settings um, for the camera. Um, for example, the encoders, the sensors, uh, all the settings for the camera on obviously resolution, frames per second and so on and so on. And then when you finish, you can just exit out of it and it will take you to the setup page of that camera on the DVR. The other things you can adjust is uh, obviously things like the video settings, the sharpness, brightness and contrast. Uh, at HD we recommend you don't change any of these specific settings as you can adjust them for the lighting conditions as they currently are, um, but then as soon as those lighting conditions change, uh, all these settings will be out of whack and the image will look uh, awful and not as you expect it to at all. So once again, once you've uh, gone through and adjust all the settings how you want to, you click on save and it will save all the settings and that, that camera is connected through to DVR. The next stage is to actually set up some recording from that camera, so we actually recording footage from that camera. So we'll go back to setup uh, and now we go to scheduler. Now this is where we basically tell the system what we want to record from the camera, when we want to record it and where we want to record it to. So at the top here, you would choose the schedule that you want to apply to that camera. At the moment, we just have one uh, schedule set up, which is every day, uh, 24 hours. We choose the camera that we want to record from. If you're setting this up for multiple cameras, you can use the control key to select which specific cameras you want to set up these recording settings for. Uh, for the purpose of this training, we'll just choose this one specific camera. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to choose where we want to record uh, footage from this camera. Um, so for, uh, in our storage group list here, we'll just click on main storage as this is where we want to record storage to. If you have a secondary storage or a NAS storage or SAN storage on here which you want to record another stream to, you can select that as well and actually record to two different storage locations. You can even choose which stream you want to choose to record uh, to which storage location. So select our storage location and we click on record camera. If we've set up two encoders, for example, if we've got two streams coming from the camera, we can choose which encoder we want to record to the storage location. As we've only got one stream coming from this camera currently, we'll just choose that one stream. 
we can choose a uh, pre-record and post-record if we've got this canvas to set up uh, to record on a specific event. So if we're going to set that up, so this will record you know four seconds before an event or five seconds after an alert or an event. If the camera supports audio, we can choose to record audio. Uh, if this camera doesn't. If we want to choose metadata or, for example, if there's any type of analytics built into the uh, IP camera we're using, we want to see those show up on screen, we can choose to save the, the metadata from that particular camera. We don't want to do it for this particular camera. Or you can, if you've got some text insertion that you've set up to appear on the camera, uh, this is where you choose if you want to include that as well. Uh, now, at the moment, this camera is set up to record 24-7. However, if we want it to record only on specific conditions, this is where we can add in our specific conditions to set up when we want the camera to record on. So we'll click on the plus sign, and we get an array of uh, different things we can use to set up recording. For example, alarms, and they can be any of the physical alarm inputs on the DVR, uh, any custom conditions we've set up, or image behavior such as motion detection from this particular camera. If we want this particular camera to start recording based on motion detection from another camera, we can choose that here. So, for example, if we want to uh, trigger recording on this camera from a different camera such as the Mega, Megapix box camera, we can choose this motion alarm, and when that box camera detects motion, this camera will, will record as well. Uh, but if this, for the sake of this demo, what we're going to do is we're just going to record uh, based on motion alarm from the specific camera, and this is where we choose it. So we'll click it here, and we'll click OK. Now this camera set up that will record only on motion detection from this particular camera. The motion detection is actually set up on the camera itself and any pre-recording uh, 4 seconds before and 5 seconds after. And as per usual remember to click on the save changes button. If we want to store video from this particular camera for a minimum amount of time, uh, we can input that here and the DVR will try to maintain a video safe for this particular camera for that amount of time. Uh, on vice versa, if we've got a maximum amount of time of video we want to save for this particular video, uh, this is where we put that setting in and it'll only uh, record up to that specific amount of days from the particular, particular camera. Um, you'll see it also gives us the size on the drive and also estimated video retention. Um, it will take The DVR will take a little time to calculate the estimated video retention from this particular camera, so if you come back and check in a couple of days, it will give you a rough indication of how much video you expect to record from this camera. So once we set all that up, uh, that camera is all set to go, and it's recording. So what we can do is we can now go back to the DVR, so just put in the IP address of the DVR itself. Just wait for it to load up. Once it's loaded up, we can uh, log in and then we can view that particular camera and view uh, obviously recorded footage for that particular camera as well. So to load up. So log in, username and password. And this will take you to uh, the main screen of the command recording on the March Network 7532 DVR. If you click on our recorder here, you'll see all the uh, cameras we set up, including uh, the one we just set up here, which is the training one. So now if we drag this up here, we can now view that camera and uh, you know, zoom in and have all the usual camera controls. So if we want to load up to full screen, and very easily. Or if you want to see any recorded footage on it, we can click our timeline and click on play. Which will show us a timeline that we can play our footage back from that specific camera. Um, no footage recorded at the moment we've just set it up. So coming from it up from there, so we'll go back through to live view. And that's how you set up an IP camera on the March Network so a free through video and set it up to record. Thank you very much for your time and tune in again. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and we'll probably see you again in the New Year with some more ASD tech training tips. Thank you very much.